बहुत बहुत आभार हमारे बीच में अब है श्री राम विलास पासवान मिनिस्टर कंज्यूमर अफेयर्स फूड एंड पब्लिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वी वेलकम यू सर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ग्रीन टू आर रिक्वेस्ट एंड बीइंग प्रेजेंट हियर विद द मिनिस्टर वी आल्सो हैव हिज वेरी वेरी डायनामिक सेक्रेटरी साहब श्री केशव देसी राजू सेक्रेटरी कंज्यूमर अफेयर्स एंड फूड्स एंड पब्लिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन यू बीन आर गाइडिंग फोर्स थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींग हियर On our panel today at the inaugural, we have Mr. Siddharth Birla. He is President Fiki, and thank you so much for being here. And Mr. Kuruj Grant, who is Chair FMCG Committee, and our knowledge partner KPMG partner KPMG, Mr. Rajat Wahi. Welcome all of you. दो साल पहले डायरेक्ट सेलिंग का ये मुद्दा हमारे फिकी तक पहुंचा। वी रियलाइज दैट दिस इंडस्ट्री नॉट ओनली हैज द कैपेसिटी टू डेवलप बिजनेस डेवलप ऑन्टरप्रन्योर्स बट आल्सो हैज कैपेसिटी टू सर्व कंज्यूमर्स रीच आउट टू मिलियंस एंड मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल एट ऑल लेवल्स Without taking much of a time, we would like to formally welcome our dear Minister Sahab Shri Ram Vilas Paswan with a green certificate. It is the green way of Fiki, of celebrating. Now, I would request uh, Mr. Kuruj Grant, the Chairman FMCG Division of Fiki, to honor our Secretary Sahab with a green certificate. Now I would request Mr. Siddharth Birla to do the welcome address. Thank you, Shilpa. I'll just go ex tempo very quickly. Ram Vilas Paswan ji, आपका बहुत स्वागत है, Secretary Desi Raj ji, Kurush Kant ji, and Mr. Wahi, and uh, all our friends and senior uh, officials who are here today. Fiki, 87 साल की हो गई. महात्मा गांधी की प्रेरित ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो हिंदुस्तान के व्यवसाय को किस तरह से बढ़ावा मिले और किस तरह गवर्नमेंट के साथ इंगेजमेंट हो और अब जो माहौल एक बना हुआ है ग्रोथ का और डेवलपमेंट का इसमें हम अपना पूरा योगदान किस तरह से दे सकते हैं वो हम निरंतर जुड़े रहते हैं जिस तरह से कंज्यूमर मार्केट का की ग्रोथ हो रही है जिस तरह से कंपनियाँ नए नए कंज्यूमर्स के पास जाना चाह रही हैं उसमें डायरेक्ट सेलिंग का एक बहुत बड़ा हाथ है और हमने भी इस इमरजिंग सेक्टर में एक बहुत दिलचस्पी हमें लगी और इसमें हमने एंटर किया हमारे विचार में जो काफ़ी चैलेंजेस हैं इस सेक्टर के अंदर अभाव है एक क्लियर डेफिनेशन ऑफ मल्टी लेवल मार्केटिंग का तो फिक्की की ये एक सुझाव रहा है कि एक सेपरेट रेगुलेटर होना चाहिए डायरेक्ट सेलिंग इंडस्ट्री के लिए नहीं तो कई इसमें डायरेक्ट सेलिंग के रास्ते में बहुत बाधाएं आती हैं कॉर्पोरेट अफेयर्स में भी काफ़ी इसके ऊपर चर्चा हुई थी क्योंकि दूसरे दूसरे कानून जो हैं वो डायरेक्ट सेलिंग के ऊपर लागू हो जाते हैं तो सर आज आप यहाँ पधारे आज सेक्रेटरी साहब पधारे आज हमारे इतने यहाँ पे गेस्ट हैं मैं सबको बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहूँगा बिना समय लिए हुए मैं अपना स्पीच समाप्त करता हूँ थैंक यू Thank you so much, Mr. Birla. Now, uh, my request, Kurush, uh, Kurush Grant, who is chairing our FMCG division, to actually come and talk about industry, industry's perspective, and what he feels about direct selling. Maniya Mantri ji, distinguished people on the dais, uh, ladies and gentlemen, direct selling is not new. In fact, uh, as a child growing up, the vegetable salesman coming to our doorstep. The sabji wala coming to your doorstep is something we've all grown up with. It is just old wine in a new bottle in terms of processes. In fact, FMCG companies in India have been involved with direct selling processes for years. All FMCG companies uh, follow multiple channels of distribution. And when one talks about mul uh, multi-level marketing, let me give you some examples of multi-level marketing in other forms of uh, distribution typically a fast moving consumer goods the traditional fmcg distribution in india goes from manufacturer to cnf agent to distributor to trader to wholesaler to retailer and finally to the consumer that seven steps what is however extremely important and what is key to uh, what all of us are here to ensure is that there is a level playing field one must try to understand that there are several people who get involved 
with distribution mechanisms, be it direct selling companies, be it conventional distributor-oriented organizations, be it e-commerce sites, be it television marketing, and so on and so forth. For example, SEBI needs to ensure that equity pumped into some of these companies are used for the purpose the equity is being raised for. The Consumer Affairs Department obviously has to be involved to ensure that there is a level playing field as far as the consumers are concerned. Commerce and industry have to ensure that rules of FDI are maintained consistently across the organizations, irrespective of the methodology of distribution and irrespective of the methodology of order taking. The Competition Commission must clearly get involved uh, whenever there are issues of not only anti-consumer activities, but anti-trade activities also. Some of the recent instances of dumping of stock by certain methodologies of trade through use of equity money quite clearly is a good example of this. And lastly, the finance ministry needs to get involved, both at the central and state level, for the simple reason that uh, there needs to be a level playing field when it comes to service tax, when it comes to VAT, when it comes to excise duties to be collected from any kind of organization as long as it is, is it is product going directly to the consumer. Before I end, I have one request, sir, directly to you in Amway, and it has nothing to do with direct selling or direct marketing at all. You, sirs, are one of the world leaders in value-added agriculture, particularly when it comes to medicinal and herbal plants. I would request you as an Indian to bring that technology into India to assist our farmers actually adding value to themselves and to the Indian economy. Thank you. Now I would uh, request our Honorable Secretary, Mr. Keshav Desi Raju, to speak to us. Grateful to Fiki for the invitation to be present at this meeting. I just have a few remarks to make. The position that we had earlier taken in the Department of Consumer Affairs with regard to direct selling was that whatever was necessary could be administered under the Price Chits and Money Circulation Schemes Banning Act. And that was a view that was held for some years, though more recently a final decision of view was taken in consultation with the Department of Financial Services that Consumer Affairs Department ought to and should take the lead in considering the need for standalone legislation, and the need for setting up a regulator, what specifically the regulator's responsibilities would be and what was there to regulate, which is currently not being regulated, what was there to regulate which could not be dealt with under the Consumer Protection Act. As many of you would know, there was a pending issue about amendments to the Price Chits and Money Circulation Act and the possibility of granting exemptions under that act, that has been kept, that it has been decided that no amendments were necessary, no exceptions would be given under that act, and that insofar as a legitimate and direct selling was concerned, it was a matter for the Department of Consumer Affairs to, to handle. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much, sir, for these words. And uh, we are very, very hopeful that we'll continue working in the same spirit with Department of Consumer Affairs and, and, and the interministerial group that sir has just mentioned. Uh, now, uh, I would request our honorable chief guest, Minister Sahab, uh, Sri Ram Vilas Paswanji, to come and formally give the inaugural address. Mr. Pratham. फिक्की द्वारा आयोजित इस इवेंट्स का मैं स्वागत करता हूं और आपने जो यहां आने का निमंत्रण दिया है उसके लिए मैं आपको धन्यवाद देता हूं आप जानते हैं कि भारत आज विश्व के मानचित्र पर एक बड़े उपभोक्ता बाजार के रूप में स्थापित हो चुका है वैश्वीकरण के इस दौर में एक ओर जहां प्रति व्यक्ति आय तेजी से बढ़ रही है तो दूसरी ओर तरह तरह की उपभोक्ता वस्तुओं का प्रसार भी देश भर में हो रहा है अनुमान है कि आगामी 10 वर्षों में देश में उपभोग आज के स्तर से चार गुना हो जाएगा हाल के दिनों में डायरेक्ट सेलिंग अथवा सीधे व्यापार मॉडल का प्रचालन प्रचलन तेजी से बढ़ा है और इसके और बढ़ने की संभावना है 
मैं जानता हूं कि ऐसी कंपनियां जैसे एम वे ओरीफ्लेम एवन आदि ने देश में इस तरह के डायरेक्ट सेलिंग के नेटवर्क स्थापित किए हैं अधिकांश मामलों में घरेलू महिलाओं के माध्यम से इन कंपनियों ने अपने उत्पाद सीधे अन्य ग्राहकों उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचाने का कार्य किया है और ऐसा कर रहे हैं मैं मानता हूं कि डायरेक्ट सेलिंग का तरीका जनता के बीच लोकप्रिय हो चुका है और कंज्यूमर्स इस बात से प्रसन्न होता है कि इंटरनेशनल कंपनियों द्वारा विदेश में बनी वस्तुएं उन्हें घर बैठे उचित दर पर मिल जाता है किंतु डायरेक्ट सेलिंग के लिए इस्तेमाल की जाने वाली प्रक्रिया में खतरा भी है डायरेक्ट सेलिंग के मॉडल के लिए नीति निर्धारण करने तथा उसके आलोक में दिशा निर्देश करने अथवा संचालन के नियम किए जाने की आवश्यकता है अभी सिद्धार्थ बिरला जी ने कहा है कि सेपरेट रेगुलेटर होना चाहिए रेगुलेटरी का जो बात आई है उसमें मैं काफ़ी वजन देखता हूं और निश्चित रूप से हम इस पर विशेष जोर दे करके और इस पर क्या करते हैं कोई निर्णय लेंगे मैं आपसे एक ही चीज़ इसके माध्यम से कहूंगा कि आप जो भी रेगुलेटर बना दें जो भी आपका प्रपोजल हो उसमें जरूर इस बात को देखिए कि कंज्यूमर के साथ में धोखाधड़ी नहीं होना चाहिए इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ आप सब लोगों को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद है जय हिंद जय भारत बहुत बहुत आभार सर इन शब्दों के लिए जो अभी आपने हम सब के बीच में रखे अब ज़्यादा समय ना लेते हुए आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट आवर एस्टीम पैनल फॉर द इनाग्रेशन ऑफ द रिपोर्ट दैट फिकी के पी एम जी टुगेदर हैव डन द रिपोर्ट इज अ डायरेक्ट सेलिंग अ ग्लोबल इंडस्ट्री अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर मिलियंस Amway India. We established our business here in 1995. That is, we came in and set up an office, but we did not start and uh, commence our commercial operations until 1998. Amway sourced its products uh, in the small-scale sector. Um, that may sound easy, but in fact, it was incredibly hard. Um, you would appreciate when you're talking about high-quality, uh, you know, products. Uh, with high levels of technology and formulations, it, it requires a very serious manufacturing competence to make those. Our commitment to make in India is incredibly strong. We are just today um, uh, setting up a 600 crore manufacturing facility. This is just an artist impression of it here. This is being done in the state of uh, Tamil Nadu. And uh, we will commission this plant uh, early next year, um, and uh, it will be actually fully finished in approximately October of next year, but it'll actually start making products uh, for some of our categories in February. What Amway offers today is, as for with those products, a 100% money back guarantee. Uh, that may not sound like any big deal, but I can tell you that Amway and other direct selling companies that are here today are the only FMCG companies in this country who offer comprehensive money back guarantees. We make the promise, but importantly, we stand behind those promises. Uh, the other thing, of course, all direct selling companies do, including Amway, is we offer a business opportunity. So half of our business is our high quality products, but the other half is how we distribute our products. We've had a few challenges uh, over the last few years. And uh, you know, there are those that would look at our business and say, well, you know, 2,000 crore turnover, 15 years, what are you complaining about? That's a pretty good result. And we don't uh, d you know, discount that. At the same time, we think we could have been three times that size had perhaps some of the issues we've had to deal with not been there. First and foremost, uh, in our view, there is a lack of definitional and operational clarity regarding the business of direct selling. Um, and that needs to be sorted out. Thank you very much.
My name is Moritz Brugink. I am executive director of the European Direct Selling Association. That's a bit of a particular organization. It's not like a national uh, direct selling association. Our sole purpose of uh, being is to uh, interact with the regulator in uh, Brussels mainly uh, as capital of the European Union. So we have a lot of experience in um, the European regulation of uh, the direct selling sector. So just to give you a brief uh, overview first of uh, how Europe uh, looks like in terms of uh, direct selling. Um, just to refresh your minds, 28 countries, member states now of the European Union, 505 million um, inhabitants, and the capital, as I said, kind of capital is Brussels. Now then if you look at the regulation of our sector, it is very well regulated, it's heavily regulated. And on one side, it's, we're not so happy with it as an industry, heavily regulated. But on the other side, we're also happy with it because it, it gives a kind of structure in the market, gives confidence to both authorities but also to uh, consumers. So despite the fact that there is a strong regulation, we, we welcome it. I would be very happy to see com consumers complain more to our ombudsman uh, because it actually gives confidence in the market, gives confidence that consumers can complain and then can find a resolution if they have a, a problem. So, concluding on this, uh, on, on this presentation, I think in the European Union we have embraced uh, direct selling, we have strongly regulated it from a consumer point of view, from a business to business point of view. Uh, sometimes it's heavy for companies, but in general uh, we companies are happy with a strong regulated market. So I could only encourage you uh, to hear, as long as you have freedom of entrepreneurship, um, if you guarantee consumer rights and uh, rights of your direct sellers, then the markets will thrive. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Fiki for putting on this event in this uh, very important sector of the economy that offers so many opportunities for uh, Indians and Americans and other foreign businesses. Right now, relations uh, between the United States and India are at a very positive inflection point. Uh, lots of activity with a new government and very high level engagement on a number of levels uh, between the United States uh, and the Indian government and our businesses. What's really important in our efforts at promoting trade and investment uh, in our commercial diplomacy with the Indian government on behalf of the interests of U.S. companies, market access issues they may confront in doing business here. Uh, and, and this is a message that we try to promote around the world, is to have close industry government consultation early and often. Uh, because when it comes to policy, regulations, legislation, you will have better outcomes with close uh, industry and government cooperation, better outcomes for uh, the government of India in your regulatory capacity in uh, developing your economy, and better outcomes for your consumers uh, and your businesses. That's really uh, a foundation concept for us uh, in how we promote trade and investment and how we want government uh, and industry to work together. And we very much want U.S. companies to be a part of that. One of the key messages we try to communicate is that uh, the many U.S. companies that operate here, whether you have a direct presence or you're selling into the market, um, should be viewed as stakeholders in the Indian economy. When the Indian econ economy grows and opens up, opens up, we firmly believe that U.S. companies will also be able to grow and prosper. I also want to uh, thank Fiki for putting this uh, event together. Um, this sector, direct selling, fast-moving consumer goods, is so broad it has huge opportunities uh, for the growing middle class in India. Um, the United States is very optimistic about bringing more business to India. Uh, we want to do that in our job in promoting trade and investment uh, between our two countries. We want to do a lot more of that, so we look forward to working with FICI uh, to jointly promote trade and investment between the United States and India. Thank you. In the regulator, we will talk about the regulator. We will talk about the regulator. We will talk about the regulator. यह रेगुलेटर लाने की आवश्यकता है रेगुलेटर आएगा तो उसका क्या काम होगा कैसे क्या करेगा 
हर सरकार जब आता है हर इंडस्ट्री ये सोचते हैं कि कुछ नए चीज़ें आएंगे पर जब तक पॉलिसी बनता है बहुत कुछ चेंज हो जाते हैं और ये एक्सपेक्टेशन बहुत ऊपर उठाना गलत है क्योंकि हर एक इंडस्ट्री का प्रॉब्लम्स भी है मैं डायरेक्ट सेलिंग के प्रॉब्लम्स के बारे में बात करना चाहता हूँ क्योंकि डायरेक्ट सेलिंग जो है अगर रेगुलेशन इसमें नहीं है तो कई गड़बड़ हो सकते हैं और लोगों को काफ़ी नुकसान भी हो सकता है हमारी एक्सपेक्टेशन है कि 2025 तक ये एक बहुत 11 टेन एंड हाफ इलेवन बिलियन डॉलर इंडस्ट्री बन सकती है और इसकी सबसे अहमियत इस इंडस्ट्री सबसे बड़ी अहमियत है कि 60 परसेंट इसमें एम्प्लॉयड वमेन है तो तो मतलब लेडीज़ के लिए ये बहुत बड़ी इंडस्ट्री है कि आउट ऑफ द फाइव मिलियन पीपल जो इसमें एम्प्लॉयड हैं सिक्सटी परसेंट वमेन है आज हमारे देश में अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इतने ज़्यादा हैं तो इस ढंग के यदि विकल्प को हम लोग लाएं जहाँ इंटीमीडियज घट जा रहे हैं जहाँ यू नो हम लोगों के मार्जिन जो जाते हैं जो बनाते हैं मैन्युफैक्चरर और कंज्यूमर के बीच में वो यदि घट जाता है और हमको अच्छे गुणवत्ता वाला स्टैंडर्ड वाला सामान मिलता है तो इससे बेटर उपभोक्ता कुछ नहीं चाहता है डायरेक्ट सेलिंग इंडस्ट्री का एक 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 इंटेंशन होता है जिसमें वो कहते हैं कि हम जो आपको देते हैं डायरेक्टली देते हैं तो इसलिए आप जो मार्जिनस जो वेस्ट हो जाता है मिडलमैन के बीच में वो मार्जिन आपके हाथ में आ जाता है Direct selling has huge opportunities in India uh, because of the great distances that exist here in this country. Uh, so it's in a perfect uh, form of distribution in, in bigger countries. And also you have to be a bit uh, social in nature uh, in order to make it work and entrepreneurial. And I think those ingredients uh, exist uh, heavily here in uh, India. So it's, uh, all the ingredients are there for a great successful uh, journey.